Waldrop. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pipe Dummies. Mm, dummies. Uh, speaking of pipe dummies, look at this pipe cleaner. <laughs> what happened? There's Dude. like nothing left on it. Dude. I got like rats eating it or something. Huh. That's not good. You don't want to clean with them. I mean, they're supposed to look like that. Anyway. Uh, anyway. I I only brought that up because it was sitting right in front of my face. Uh, thanks for uh, coming and checking out another episode of Pipe Dummies, episode four. We are going to talk about episode four, which is also um, one of the best episodes of Star Wars, by the way. The initial episode is episode four. Probably. Nobody cares. No, oh, people care. People yeah, care. They, prob they probably do. They really do. They get real kind of squirrely and nutty about it. But oh, that's not supposed to happen. Um, they got like chunkies coming out. What? Had some chunkies coming out through the pipe. That's why you're not smoking out of your badass suge. That's got the the ch the interlocking chamber. Yeah, the, I, I'm not smoking out of the suge. I'm smoking out of one of the Cobbit pipes tonight. I think this is the elf. Um. Anyway, so episode four, we've wasted a few minutes. Uh, we're talking about English. English, proper fucking English, Johnny fucking knocks me uh, this week. So I know Logan, you're going to be happy, and we've kind of looked into what exactly makes an English coin. There's a lot of different definitions. Um, so you know, probably all the ones we'll say are wrong. So don't quote us on any of them. Well, I mean, the basic thing <clears throat> that I think we can agree upon is that, or that the definitions I should say agree upon is that. English blends contain no uh, flavoring, no casing. Yep. Um, but then I don't know what's the difference. Between, if it's an English blend, it can, but it can have Virginia, Virginia tobaccos in there, but then there's a Virginia blend that's different. So I think, I mean, I'm I don't know, man. I mean, it's so confusing. Like, And that's the thing. Like, I've seen aromatics, like, for example, like some of the Suge stuff, right? It, it's so freaking confusing, and like it's much more confusing than cigars for me, because it's pretty easy to tell. Like, is it a mild strength, medium, full? Like, I think it's fairly easy, right? It's easy to know, like, okay, what wrappers on it. Obviously, you can't see the the fillers and the binder, so you just kind of have to go off what you're being told. But here, it's like the suge stuff is aromatics, but it's not really aromatics. Like I've seen some Virginia or some Virginia stuff say it's aromatic, but it has no flavoring. So like, like does it just mean it smells good? And then like with this English stuff, I'm just so confused because like you read the definition, you're right, Rob. Like I mean, it basically says there's no there's no casing, but there's like all this bullshit between is it an English like mixture or like an English blend, which is like a whole nother level. We're not even gonna try to get to. But and why, if it has Virginias, like, how can it be English if it's Virginias? I mean, they came across the pond. We didn't go back. You know what I mean? So I, I just don't really get the whole thing. But basically, from what I have read, and I'm, I'm guessing the general consensus, is an English blend is not aromatic that uses some sort of Latakia and some sort of Virginias. And that's it. Well... <clears throat> That's gonna actually and it's ribbon cut, and it's ribbon cut most of the time. We can actually go with our first question, which is from Harley Holmes. Um, you know, what are the, what differentiate English English blends from others? And we, you know, started to touch on it, and we'll probably get through more of it as the show goes on. It tastes good. I haven't smoked a lot of English stuff. You should, because it's basically what non pussy smoke. <laughs> awesome. But, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you... I'll tell you right now. Everyone knows what kind of cigars I like and, you know, whatever. If you don't like aromatics, there's a pretty good chance you're going to like English blends. As a general rule. You know, to be honest... I mean, right now I'm smoking um, Dunhill... What am I smoking? You're smoking early morning pipe. Yeah, Dunhill early... That's what you said. I think. Hang on. Everybody just calm down. Just calm your tits. Uh, <clears throat> I just had the freaking bag here. Where'd it go? Is that what I sent to you? Uh, Dunhill early morning. That's what I'm smoking. 
Early morning pipe, yep. Um, and yeah, it is the one that you sent to me. And so, I mean, Dunhills are, when I looked up in mild preparation for today to figure out what I was going to smoke, went to a few different sites that list. Actually, you know where we should have gone was uh, tobacco reviews. That's where I'm at right now. That's oh. by, by the way, if you need a site that isn't going to steer you wrong, tobaccoreviews.com is definitely a, a young pipe smoker's friend. They have pretty much every blend. They've got all the stats. You know, some of the stuff is contradictory, but as a general rule, it's pretty good. And it gives you a good idea if you want to go search and like you're like, oh, I want to smoke a good English blend. Go there and search. And it's actually what, you know, I did because I've got, you know, I've bought way more pipe tobacco than I'll probably ever smoke in my life. And Rob and I were chatting before the show and we've talked about how much I hate, you know, aromatics. And it's funny, like with cigars, you know, you go out and all these people, you'll buy all these limited editions and stuff and whatever. Dude, even though I do not like aromatics, I went out and bought this fucker. The 2014, and I couldn't help myself about the St. Patrick's. I just can't help myself. I've have got a problem. You, have you popped that tin of St. Patrick's yet? I have not, and I've heard that it's pretty good. But I was thinking, Rob, just because you know how much I love you, when I when I send you a little other care package, I was thinking of keeping one around for posterity, and then popping one, and then sending you a couple of quick hitters, you know, just because I love you. It's because you know I'll actually smoke it. Well, because I know you'll actually smoke and probably enjoy it. Exactly. Uh, well, we've, I mean, we'll get into some more. We're going to talk a little bit more about aromatics later in the show. Uh, as Mark, and I was talking to Mark <clears throat> earlier today. Mark is, uh, uh, if you're listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube or whatever. He's going to send me some bomb aromatics. And I say, gonna, do your worst, sir, because it doesn't I, exist. I, I'm, I'm curious to see what his, uh, Mark, what your opinion is of what are bomb aromatics. Because we've... I went down the list on um, on pipereviews.com or whatever that the site we were just talking about, and I found the highest rated aromatics um, that were reviewed the most amount of times. So it was let's instead of saying it was it got a four stars, but only two people reviewed it. I wanted at least like 50 people to review it. And, and going it, for quantity and consistency. Yes, yeah, exactly. So I went down that list and I picked up all that stuff and we'll we'll get into it. Um, so I'm that's curious. a later to, show. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, we'll get into it today because we can talk about it. But yeah, that's uh, true. Um, anyway, and I was telling Mark, um, it's, his name is Mark M A R C, which is usually short for Marcus. Uh, from if I understand, if I know that correctly, I don't know if I do. Um, but I've always thought that the name Mark with a C is much cooler than Mark with a K. I mean, I like fucking Marky Mark, son. But he was with a K. No, he wasn't, was yeah. he? Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. That wasn't really my generation. Mm. Oh, somebody's actually watching Pipe Dummies. Almost Cool Street Gamer. Where do you ask? I can't believe you're actually watching this crap. Who is? I don't know. He posted a question on the, the video on YouTube. He said, I love your show. And I'm like, wow, you're, you love it more than I do. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so I'm smoking the Dunhill... Early morning, out of my my, uh, I think this is the Elf Cobbit, which I really like these freaking pipes. They're they're just a lot of fun. It's most broken the Froggy. Frogmorton, which one? It's the Frogmorton. I call it the classic, but uh, the Frogmorton Craftsberry. I think it's just called Frogmorton for real. Okay, and that was the one that you, you that's the one you sent me. Um, I, I sent you the on the bayou, and I probably sent you some of this too. Anyway, um, so these English blends, the flavor to me is, is it's still a lot lighter than when you smell it. When you crack open some of these, and Dunhill Early Morning is, is no no exception. When you crack open the uh, package, or I've just, you can buy it in bulk. And that's one thing we've noticed. If something's available in tins and it's available in bulk, buy it in bulk. It's a lot mm. cheaper. But when you crack this open, it smells strong. And it smells kind of dirty. It smells earthy. It smells like campfire. 
Um, uh, it actually even kind of... <clears throat> Yeah, it smells almost sour. It's it's not to me. It's not a very appealing smell, but when you fire it up and you taste it, it's it's in the same vein of aromatics. Is that it doesn't taste the same. To me. It doesn't taste the way that it smells. Sour is a good way to describe that, actually. Yeah, it's just got kind of a sour note to it. It kind of is. And but it doesn't taste that way. It no. Ta- to me, it tastes. It has kind of a floral taste to it. It's still earthy. It's burnt. Got that burnt, charred wood, that smoky flavor that you would expect. Um, <clears throat> you know, because I'm assuming there's some fire cured tobacco in here. It tastes like it, um, and you would expect that flavor to pop out. And I do get that. But the rest of it is, again, it's thin. It's not quite as heavy. It's definitely stronger on the tobacco side. Even though this is an early morning, this is probably a mild blend, mild to medium blend. But it's definitely I can definitely feel more than when I'm smoking uh, your average aromatic. But one thing that I've learned, at least about aromatics, is that, I mean, there's these, you know, like the one Logan just showed you, the, this is Peterson, summertime 2014, you crack it open and it smells like freaking walnuts and berries and, you know, heaven. Like, I want to go run around in that field and roll around in it. You want to frolic across the field and, like, I, hug me at the other end? I, well, maybe. Choose your words. <laughs> Carefully. But then you pick up something like this, and this is Silums. This is one of the ones that uh, that we're going to do on the uh, Make Logan Enjoy a Aromatic Blend episode, which is coming up. This one's this is made in Germany, so this is kind of a... This is a German blend. But it's aromatic. I smell cherries, but I also smell fire cured tobacco. I also smell fire in there. So I'm, I'm just curious... <clears throat> Not all aromatics are gonna be fruity and taste like candy. I mean, some of them, some of these have some pretty interesting flavors to them. Even this, that one that we talked about. Um, <clears throat> uh, what is this? Gaweth and Hogarth. Bob's That's a chocolate flake. Bob's chocolate flake. I mean, this is a. It's flake, and it's, I mean, say that it's chocolate, you must think, oh, yeah, it must have some sort of chocolate flavoring. And it's listed as an aromatic. It smells like cinnamon and cherries. But <clears throat> it's definitely heavier in the smell. So I don't know. I'm curious to see how that's going to go. But we can talk about that at another time. <clears throat> so tell us about the Frog Morton. Because I know you Frog Morton, regular classic. I don't know. It's okay. Like, the problem I have with a lot of this pipe tobacco stuff is I like smoking a cigar that's going to kick me in the teeth. Like, it's got some structure to it and stuff. Like, when you smell it, you're exactly right. Like, I would have expected basically smelling this for this to be really strong, and it's not at all. Like, I mean, it's very, it's very very mild uh, in terms of the strength for sure, and the body I don't think is not very heavy either. I mean, it... I don't know. I mean, it's... You can definitely taste the... How do you ever say it? I can't ever say this word right. Like, the Latakia, right? Like, I think that, from all the tobacco I've smoked, it has a very distinctive taste. You know what I mean? Like, you know, kind of the the spicy kind of, like, texture to it. You know, I think it, it's... it. You can get that, but that's about it, man. I mean, it's just... For me, it's just very straightforward. I don't know. I mean, I like the... I, I've noticed that I like... I guess stuff with Perique in it a little bit better because I think it's a little bit stronger, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm just kind of making shit up. By the way, I'm still jet lagged, so anything <laughs> I say in this episode is 100% dismissible. When did you get home? Um, late Monday. And plus Callaway decided to have a party in her fucking crib at 4 in the morning and just stay up. I actually got the Evite. She sent out invitations. Oh, she's like, oh, party in the USA, party in my crib, party in my crib. I'm like, babe, go to bed. She's like, I ain't going to bed. She's like, I already slept 10 hours. I'm like, I got, I've been trying to tell out. I was like, we got to keep her ass up because this whole going to bed at 6 sounds real nice, but it's not real nice when she's waking up at 4 in the morning. It's, it's nice because you guys can kick back and watch House of Cards or whatever. Whatever, yeah. yeah. Which actually House of Cards... They all, the whole third season is like two days away. 
Dude, I cancel my Netflix. It sucks. You, I don't know why I did that. That you need to pay that four ninety nine a month or whatever it is and get it back. It's such a good show. My wife and I are actually going back and <clears throat> uh, rewatching. She doesn't remember them. I've watched. I watched the first season and second season once, where you sit down and you're watching it, um, and then I'll put them on while I'm working in the background, so I'm more familiar with the story than she is. But I'm so oh, excited. Dude. Awesome. I watched the the first one, like, literally just... And this was when Allie was pregnant, so, like, she would go to bed at, like, 7 o'clock, so it was really awesome. So I would just go out in the garage and smoke by myself and watch Netflix, and I burned through that ish in, like, literally, like, a couple of weeks. Like, not even, a, like, a week, if yeah. that. A couple of days. And then I watched the second season, burned through that. And then, honestly, I'm just so sick of Netflix. Like, other than, like, Orange is the New Black, House of Cards, and some of their other little fun stuff... Amazon Prime is just way cooler. Well, I, I've got them both. Um, <laughs> nobody, this is not like Netflix hour, but whatever, we're talking about it. And we've got a question here from Almost Street Cool Gamer uh, that we'll get to in a minute. That's the guy that, yeah, that was the guy. He looks like it's, it's his avatar is like a, looks like a, a blue Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle with Quagmire's head on it. I don't know. Anyway, we'll get to his, his question in a second. Um yeah, I, I think you're right. As far as movies are concerned, I think uh, Amazon Prime is better. Uh, for Netflix is great for television shows, man. They've got a ton. There's a ton of stuff. You can go back and watch all the episodes of Friends. If you remember, Friends was probably before your time. You should watch that. I was in college when the last season came up. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... Not that it matters, but yeah. But no, if you've never watched it, you should watch it. It's a great show. And they've got all that other stuff, too. I mean... Blacklist was one of the ones. I know they spent a ton of money to get Blacklist, uh, which is You're also talking about the Blacklist, like the one with it's Red on. Reddington. Yeah, I watched. Dude, I got that on uh, just because I have Uverse. I was able to go back and watch all those. Yeah, no, I I can watch them all too, but they have it on Netflix if you. Because I mean, there's a, a lot did you like that show? You know, it took me a while to get into it, um, and I don't know how much you watched, but I watched pretty much the whole first season, and then I kind of just got like, sick of this whole, like, you know, Berlin thing, and I'm just like, who the fuck is Berlin? Like, what is going on in Berlin? Like, and I just kind of gave it up, and she married this, like, terrorist guy, and she didn't know, and she's supposed to be a profiler. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with you, chick? Spoiler, you know, but... by the way, <laughs> if you haven't watched it yet. Oh, yeah, if you haven't watched the show, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but then I started, got, I got into, man, uh, Coming back from India, uh, my friend, who will remain nameless, uh, over there the piracy laws are not so strict. And uh, he uh, got me hooked up with the first season of, uh, whatchamacall, um, what was it? Oh, of Homeland. Dude, freaking Homeland, man. you never watched that before? No, I did. I started watching it. This was not this trip, but the trip before, mm -hmm. like back in October. And I watched the first season while I was over there, and I was so enthralled that... Like, I literally got back home and found out on Uverse I can just stream through it or whatever. And I got all the way through whatever the last season is. Four? Five? Four. Yeah. When they, no offense, spoiler alert, dude, the ISIS people come and take over the embassy. That is fucking wild, man. <laughs> you are, anyway, I'm assuming the people have watched this. You did just If you it. haven't, I said spoiler alert, so it's cool. Yeah, okay, yeah, turn away. Um, no, that's the first season of Homeland. We're getting way off topic. Um, this is filler. Uh, the first season. We got another question. Uh, the first season of uh, Homeland is probably one of the best things that's ever been on TV. It, no, it's so goddamn good. And that's you right. You think the first season was the best, like the best show or best season of a show that's ever been on TV? Have you not watched The Wire? You know what? Everybody if you even it. say that that's better than The Wire, you're so full of crap. Everybody talks about The Wire, and when yeah, so and cool. I have showed or I have HBO, but it's never been on there. And now, if you have Amazon Prime, you can go through and watch anything that was on HBO that's ever been on HBO. It's on Amazon Prime, so you can watch it. And we tried to get through the first season, and I couldn't do it. What? The acting is so bad. And people love it. And it's so dated. It it's is so dated. dated. But it's tough because it was it was relevant when it came out, pagers and shit. But yeah. now it's it's really, really dated. And I've heard like the third season or whatever was great. 
fourth season's great. I just, we got halfway through it. I don't care about any of the characters. I mean, I just, yeah, I got off of it. Um, this is kind of random, but this is from, uh, this is, uh, from Gary Keefe. Um, it says, I dumped cable and got a small satellite to pick up the local channels. I uh, got more than I hoped for and have Roku and Netflix and Plex. I don't know what Plex is. I have no idea what Plex is. But, uh, yeah, we, we got off, we got on this topic and, uh, uh, cool gamer, we'll get to your question in a second. I apologize for taking a long time. Never. Um, I can see why people would dump cable <clears throat> and uh, and just stream stuff because there's so much stuff out there. And you know, I've done that. And even like, I mean, I think of the stuff that that my wife and I watch every week. That you know shows that we record and we watch every week. Um, <clears throat> and most of that stuff you can you can get it like. Um, Downton Abbey. I like that show, even though it's speaking of English blends. Uh, it's just, it's an English soap opera. That's all it is. But I like it, and she likes it, so we watch it every week. And we could buy those episodes for a buck ninety nine or whatever they are each. Um, but, but I mean, the, for me, the only reason I can't give up cable is for sports. When baseball season comes around, if I can't watch when the Giants are on the road, even though I don't always do it, but if I don't have the option to do it, it'll drive me nuts. Couldn't do. It. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big sports guy, but, like, like I don't like, and what always ends up happening is I'll never get into shows like their very first season. Like, recently, the only thing I've gotten into the first season that I got hooked on, did you ever watch The Following? The first season was great. Oh, fuck. The second got a little out of hand. Like, I was a little disappointed. Kevin Bacon let me down. The second uh, one really. It, it really let me down. I mean, it I was. I'm the third now. I can't even believe it. I just kill them all off. Like, I mean, they should just be all dead. Um, I don't know what happens in the second season, so. I won't tell you, but it was very much a letdown. Um, that, that, hotter, that hot older chick was in there for a while. Yeah, she was in there for a while. She's still in there. Uh, I won't tell you what happens to her, though. Uh, but anyways. Um, but no, dude. I, I just, like, it's so hard for me to get into shows, but, like, like in the very first season. But <laughs> one that I've gotten into recently that I think may be one of the best shows ever produced. Like, and I don't know why I love it so much, but it's The Americans. You know, it's funny. You were talking Dude, that about show that. is so fucking awesome. You were talking about that, and it's on, F it's on FX or something like that. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> and the first few seasons are on, I think they're on Netflix. They're on, they are, and they're on the third season of Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah, maybe that's it. I haven't watched any of it yet. Um, but that's one that, that we definitely want to try. Oh, uh, God, it's so good. There's a there's a new one that's called um, I think it's kind of a similar thing but it's like backwards like they're these they're these Ameri they're they're American citizens but they were they were former Russian spies and their son is like I, I don't know if he's got like Aspergers or something like that but he's like really really smart but he's got like, he's quirky but he remembers right. everything you know he's got a eidetic memory or whatever it is and uh, <clears throat> they they're trying to convert him to be a Russian spy I don't know. It seems like it's along those same lines. Um, well, maybe not, but anyway. I mean, I don't know. Um, but I, I'm no. the same way with. I, I'm like that with books. Like, if it's a, a book that's coming out and it's a trilogy, I need to wait until the last book is done for me to start it. Because if I start the book and then I finish it and the next one's not out yet, I'm fucked because I'll have to go back and read the first one again. Oh, I won't. exactly. But yeah, I think the only the only new show that we're watching that I've never watched before. Um, or shows that I've started from the beginning. Grim, I really like that. It's lame. I never got into that. It, it's lame, but I, I kind of like that lame science fiction-y type of stuff. Um, and, uh, oh, uh, <clears throat> Sleepy Hollow, same same type of deal. Nah. And Did you ever watch uh, American Horror Story? I never got into that. The first I heard one, it's really good. The first season was great. It's... <clears throat> Does it went downhill? It, I mean, speaking of, like, hotter, older... Old, hot older chick, the the wife, she's the she was the wife from um, Friday Night Lights, and she's in like like the movie or the TV show. TV show, and she's in that show Nashville now. Redhead. Nah, I didn't watch that. Whatever. She was pretty hot in this in the first season. The first season was really good, and there's a lot of it, it's like you're watching it and it's so uncomfortable. Um, it wasn't super scary. Like the stuff doesn't jump out at you, but it's like these people are dealing with some shit. The second and third seasons I couldn't get into. But it's it's interesting because it's <clears throat> we're not talking about pipes at all. They uh, 
every season is a completely different story. Hmm. Which, uh, true... Uh, it's like True Detective. True Detective. Which, by the way, that thing was hell fucking crazy. That and, Shooter, the fact that you just started watching Mad Men is awesome. I haven't started watching Mad Men either. That's another one. I'm waiting for... What? Oh, Dude, what? I haven't watched the last season yet. No, go Shadow. Jessica Lange's not who I'm talking about. Um, I mean, good for her, but she's like 70. That's, that's a little bit out of my price range. Um, okay, so let's get back to actually talking about pipes. Um, question here from Almost Street Cool Gamer. I don't know what that means, but... Um, just That's a cool name. Share your experience with long stem pipes and compare to short stem pipes. Um, my experience, <clears throat> I like a long, I like a longer stem on a pipe. For me, I mean, like this one, it's got a pretty long stem. Uh, I mean, I'll, oh, I'll share my pipe collection with you guys so you can see it. Um, and as Logan said. I'm the one who's going to end up with a ton of pipes, and of course he's right. <clears throat> what I don't like about a shorter stem pipe, and like for the uh, the suge, like Lo Logan, you're smoking it. Oh, hello. I love my suge. I love this pipe too. What I don't like, or, oh wow, it's too close to my face. I love that it's flat. It it smokes really well. No, I don't no. get the gurgle. I love that it comes apart. But I, I do want to get, and I can see that you can buy them, and I'm, I think, Logan, you can get them from the, the SigFed store here pretty soon, uh, the separate pieces. And they have a longer a longer stem that's got a bit of a bend to it. But I'm not sure. That's going to have to be one hell of a long stem to be able to support this heavy-ass pipe. Because, I mean, this thing is no bitch. Yeah, I know. How it's, heavy this thing is. Um, I mean, if you look at, I mean, this, this is what I'm smoking now, and this is the, the Cobb... Um, the Cobbit, and this is the Shire, or the Elf. Here's another Cobbit, but these are about the same length. Uh, this one is the Shire. This is the the big Mamma Jamma. That is the Magician, and as you can see, that's a good five inches long. I mean, this is, I mean, you're smoking this thing from a distance, you know? Um, <clears throat> regular poker. It's a short stem, but I don't mind it because... Like I say, it's far enough away from my face. This might be one of my favorite pipes, this little church warden. Jesus, how many pipes do you have? I just like the length. And the, the length on these are about the same. It's got more of a bend to it. I like that. But Have you smoked out all these pipes yet? The only one I haven't smoked out of is this one. Okay. That's, it's, a, that's a boss. It's got a huge freaking bowl on it. This is like 16 bucks. I that was 16 bucks? Yeah. Um, and my fa my absolute favorite pipe, my Peterson. And Dude, that's legit. It's a short stem pipe, but I like the bend. And then see, it's far enough away from my face to where this is an aromatic pipe. I can smell it. Um, it. It's far enough away. I just like this pipe. I like the way it feels in the hand. I really, Logan and I were looking at them offline. The 2015... Uh, St. Patrick's Day, Petersons are freaking badass. They're so cool looking. I, it's, I'm Dude, they it. are. Like I'm even thinking about buying one. Because that's how cool they are. I have, like, eight, I have eight pipes. Eight pipes. I mean, <laughs> I've got basically the Suge, the one... Uh, I got this little car. I mean, I, I've got probably, yeah, but these are all just like dirty pipes. Like, the only ones that I'd be proud... This, I mean, this is just a, a basic cob. The only ones I'd be proud, if somebody said, hey, show me your pipe collection, the only two that I would show them would be this one, my Sug, and my Sav. Yeah, that's, that's all a, you need. You need a Sug and a Sav, and that's all you need. I'm telling and you. And then man. I got a bunch of bullshit that I smoke aromatics out of on my quest to find something that I don't hate. Oh, it's going to happen. That's going to be another episode. We'll get into that in a minute. So, for, uh, let's see, Cool Gamer... I mean, Logan, you haven't really smoked out of anything that's long stem, really. I mean, the longest stem one that I've got here is probably this, and that's not even that long. Yeah, that's just a standard stem. So, yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I like the feel. I have no frame of reference. I mean, we've talked about we've talked about this in other shows that a lot of pipe 
a lot of the, the, the appeal of smoking a pipe and you know, the, collecting the pipes, having all the different <clears throat> accoutrements, if you will. Nice uh, it's all about feel. Um, and I like Lord of the Rings. I like watching that movie. Every time I watch it, I want to fire up a pipe, and this reminds me of the stuff that they're smoking out of. So I like it. It's fun for me. It Does it impact the flavor or the smoking experience in any way? I don't think so. I mean, for me, it's a little bit more comfortable in the sense that it is farther away from my face. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I haven't had the beard for that long, but it's long enough to where if I'm smoking really close, I mean, I could have a little fuego going up in my face, and I don't want that. So I don't know. I It really just depends on the situation for me as to which pipe I'm going to grab because... They're all very similar. I, I've either got short stems or long stems, and it just depends on the situation, what I'm feeling like and what I'm smoking. And maybe if it's if, if I'm smoking an aromatic, <clears throat> sometimes I'd, I don't want to have such a long, uh, a long stem because I want to get that aroma from it as well. So that might that might be the only thing that impacts it is you know maybe if it's closer to your face, you're getting more of the aroma. Um, I would say that's the true case because I definitely get some blowback. You know, when I smoke this, which is nice. And on aromatics, it is nice to have a shorter stem, at least for me, because you get a little bit of the burn, you know, from the, the actual pipe. Um, one thing I did notice on my recent trip over overseas is that it was very nice to have this little bugger, because all I was able to do, I didn't bring it up here, but I have a little, you know, Zycar. I mean, every every cigar person has this, like a little Zycar, like 10 or 15 count little humidor, like a travel door deal. Mm-hmm. And I was able to put in, you know, uh, this pipe, and I took another pipe. Huh? That's a good idea. And then just put in a couple of, you know, bags of pipe tobacco and some cleaners and stuff, which I ultimately ended up leaving my friend over there because he, you know, he started smoking Aramax. He's like, oh, my God, this is so much better than the shit we get in India. I'm like, well, no shit, man. <laughs> like, you're smoking, like, fucking shit over here. Like, just terrible. But uh, it worked really well. Like, if with a long stem pipe, it would have been a much bigger pain in the ass to uh, to pack all that stuff. Which, again, you can take the stem out and all that kind of stuff. But you have to worry about it getting busted or chipped or whatever. So it was it was convenient to have a smaller stem for that purpose, at least, for me. Yeah, I can, <clears throat> from the standpoint of travel, if I'm traveling and I'm taking a pipe with me, it's not a question I'm taking the Sugi pipe because like it, it breaks down into a bunch of different pieces. I can throw it, like you said, into a, a travel little travel humidor, which is a great idea. Which, by the way, if you do that, make sure you keep that one specifically yeah. for pipe tobacco because <laughs> I opened up in my room and the people clean my hotel were like, like, I mean, it stunk up the joint. Yeah, for real. I can't even imagine. I remember that day that you got... Well, okay, I'm going to get off this question. So, uh, Cool Gamer, I don't know if that really answers your question or if there really isn't. I hope it does. I think it's, all just, it's all just personal preference. I mean, for me, I like the long stems. I mean, it, to me, it's kind of fun. I like the, I like having it, you know, sits far away from the face. Um, yeah, I think it's just personal preference. Um, <clears throat> and I really am enjoying this this uh, early morning uh, early morning pipe from Dunhill. It's got more, much more body to it than <clears throat> any of the uh, aromatics that I've smoked. And it's got that build. You know, like you're smoking a cigar, flavor builds up on your tongue, the spice builds up on your yeah. tongue as you, as you get more and more into it. And I'm definitely feeling that on my tongue. Feeling that, that kick kind of in the back of my throat as well. And that's that to me is what I, that's how I register strength. Um I've never really, I'm, well, I can't say never. For the most part, I don't smoke things and get like a buzz off of it, but I do. you do feel it to an extent, and I'm, I'm starting to feel that in the back of my throat. Not, It's not unpleasant at all. Um, so this is definitely on the stronger end of what I have been smoking out of a pipe, and I imagine I'm just going to look it up just for uh, just for SMGs to see. Um, for those kids watching home, that shits and grins, just so you know. <laughs> just to see... Uh, See um, what the strength is on this one. I don't think. I mean, if it's early morning pipe. It can't be very high. Um, let's see. Dunhill early morning pipe. The tin has a rooster on it. A rooster. Yeah. No, it's it's mild to medium. So <clears throat> it's a blend of Latakia, Oriental, and Virginia. 
Um, it's one of the true classics. It starts with golden and red flu cured tobaccos, which is where I'm getting that smoky flavor, and matured under pressure while heat is applied, deepening that flavor. Uh, choice oriental tobaccos are added for spice, and just enough Latakia is incorporated to give the blend a smoking. So, so okay, so smokies, the Latakia is where I'm getting it. With a hint of leather, that's a good call. It does have some le a leathery note to it. Um, but I do like it. It's definitely different. <clears throat> it's much more like a cigar to, to me. Logan, are you still there? Sorry. Someone was asking a, a question I actually know an answer to about a cigar-related question. Oh. So I had to answer, so I feel like a complete dumbass. Um, <clears throat> so another comment here from Gary Keith. And Gary, I hope I'm saying your name right. How do you spell it? It's K-E-I-F-E. Keefe? I think it's Keefe. Okay. Um, with the silent E. Because Keefe, like the cigar brand Keefe, there's an A in it. It's with an A in it. K-A-I-F, or yeah, I-A or something. So I think Gary Keefe. Anyway, Gary won, okay. and Logan, uh, I'll, I'll send you an email with Gary's information because he won uh, last week, I think, in Cigar Chat. Um <clears throat> She was talking about the, the corn cob pipes. And yeah, this is definitely these are corn cob pipes. And they're called cobbits. Like the Hobbit, H O B B I T. They're cobbits, C O B B I T, not comet. So it probably sounded like I said comet, but they're cobbits. And they're actually from uh, Meerschaum. Uh, Washington, Missouri, baby. Meerschaum uh, corn cob pipe coming. If you just go to corncobpipe.com, I think is their website. So yeah, they're definite corn cobs. But they're. they're a, a better quality. I mean, they've got like a lacquer finish on them. They're not like this one. You can see the difference. This one's kind of rough. This is a real basic corn cob pipe that costs like three ninety nine. Um, but this has a nice sheen to it. It's, it's kind of sanded down, real smooth, feels good in the hand. Um, the, the stems are kind of a, a cheap, uh, kind of a cheap tobacco or not tobacco, a cheap plastic. So the stems aren't great. But I mean, what are you gonna do for fifteen bucks? I like it. And yeah. Yeah, we do have his name right, so that's good. So it is Keith. Um, <clears throat> so we're about a little more than halfway through the show. We spent most of our time talking about Netflix. I'm just so tired right now. Talk like, about your Frog Morton a little bit, because I know you love that stuff. I haven't smoked it yet. I don't really like this one. So which I'll, one is it that you're smoking? And I'll look, I'll look it up. Just, I'm just smoking it. the Frog Morton Classic is what I'm calling it. And it's just Frog Morton Craftsbury collection. Okay. Um, Frog Morton's cellar? No. Oh, just Frog. a Craftsbury collection Frog Morton where he's just That's sitting it. there. It, it looks like you got the frog take just sitting on the log. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So that one, it's a it's mild to medium as well. Um, the room note is mellow. It's Latakia in Virginia. It's an English mm -hmm. blend. Uh, Frog Morton, it's made by Mc, McClellan. Uh, Frog Morton is one of McClellan's most popular. I'm getting all this information from pipesandcigars.com, by the way. Um, one of their most popular Latakia-based blends. <clears throat> its singular composition sets it apart from the competition. Uh, at its heart, the star of the show is rich, smoky Cyprian. C-Y-P-R-I-A-N. Like Cyprian. Cyprus. Cyprian. Cyprian? Whatever. Cyprian Latakia. Uh, the blend almost stays away from the usual edition of Orientals, or it also stays away from the usual edition of Orientals, and is complemented simply with some fine Virginias. Um, <clears throat> and what makes it so different is a subtle but complementary note that ties everything together harmoniously. Whatever the fuck that means. Yeah, exactly. Because um, I'm not getting that. That's some fucking marketing right there. Well, they didn't really say anything. Um, I know. Well, I know what, it, what the blend is. It's Latakia and Virginia. Um, so the difference in what we're both smoking here, um, mine has that Oriental in it. So that's what they're talking about. It. Mine has that Oriental that adds a little bit of flavor to it. Adds some spice. Yours doesn't have that. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think yours is a more true representation of what Latakia tastes like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know that we had talked about, and I think you bought some. Of just, I got some. Just straight up. Straight Latakia, straight Cavendish, straight this, straight that. Oh, just yeah, we'll get into that. What it tastes like. And we should do that for a show at some point. Oh, we're going to.
because we've still got we've got a ton of these um, mini corn cob pipes. Cobbins. No, just mini ones. The ones we got. From oh, yeah. all the mini tasters. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Oh, you know, I've got another show that we can do here. <clears throat> I picked up is I found, I posted this all up on Cigar Federation. Um, <clears throat> I, I found a bunch of pipe stuff at my folks' house. and Because I remember there was a there was a pipe stand and pipes from when I was a kid. And my dad never smoked a pipe, so I just, but I remember always seeing it. And I asked my mom about it. I figured it was by my grandfather's, but it turned out it was my great uncle's. Um, oh, is that where it ended up? Yeah, it, it was my great uncle's uh, pipes from like the 50s. And my dad actually made the the stand, and it's oh, that's cool. It's got it's a six. It holds six uh, pipes, and then the middle's got like a box that opens. You can keep your tobacco in or whatever. Um, but there were a ton of pipe parts. Um, I think three or four complete pipes. I don't think any of them are anything special. I looked to see if they were uh, if there were brand names, but I couldn't find any information. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, you restore them. I'm going to restore them. Oh, so that'll be good. I, I, yeah, it'll be fun to watch me screw that up. So I found uh, some different things that I need to get. Uh, i got a buffing wheel so I can buff them out, uh, some carnauba wax to give them a new shine. And Are you th- using, like, Everclear to clear out the bowl? Yeah, the Everclear or um, <clears throat> the, guy, the guy that I was looking at, Everclear is the, the best choice, but you can just use regular vodka. Um, and I got a, uh, a pipe reamer here that I haven't even opened yet. <clears throat> What the hell's a pipe reamer? Well, I'll show you. Now, please educate. Um, basically, it's this is a pipe reamer. So okay. those are blades on there. Oh, you, so you use it to like carve out the bowl? Just kind of stick it in there and twist and it's it. It's supposed around. to take away the cake, I guess. Well, I mean, yeah, that's what you do if you're restoring like an estate pipe. Right. Basically, you're carving off the... The uh, inside of the bowl where there's the cake from all the burnt yeah, nice the, over the years, all, yeah. Yeah, all the ox... I don't know if they call it oxidized or what they call it, but you're carving all that off, and, <clears throat> you know, you, you get through, you know, a quarter inch or whatever it is, and, and then... You're down to fresh briar, basically. Down, exactly, you're down to fresh briar, so in essence, you're down to a brand new pipe. Um, <clears throat> you clean out everything. I'm going to try to get new stems and everything to make them look really cool. Um, that's a project I haven't started yet, but <clears throat> I'm definitely going to do that. And I also ordered some pipe cleaners because I figured, what the hell? You can never that. have enough pipe cleaners. But I've here's learned the that. Thing. lesson to be learned here. Oh. Three bundles of Zen pipe cleaners. They're soft. And there's 132 of them in here. But look at them in comparison to my other pipe cleaners. Okay. And I smoke a lot of long stem pipes. Yeah, touche. So, <laughs> you can just send those to me. Yeah, I might just do that. That would be awesome. Thank you. It was like a four dollar investment, so I'm not that mad. But lesson learned: pay attention to the size uh, of the <clears throat> of the pipe cleaners that you're getting. And <clears throat> I guess we'll we'll get into we. I'm trying to take this out, and I can't. I can't get the reamer off the little handle there. Can't get the reamer out of the hole, Jimmy. Uh, so, we had talked a little bit about trying to get Logan to like aromatics, and this may work, it may not, but I went down the list, and if we pull up tobaccoreviews.com, this is going to be fun, and you go to search, and I searched by, um, you can search by brand or by blend type, typed in aromatic, <clears throat> and it just hits search, and you can you can change the order any way you want. You know by how many times I clicked on, how many times they were reviewed, and I just scrolled down until I saw one that had a high number. Uh, Cornell and Dahl Dial Autumn Evening got three stars <clears throat> in an aromatic. It was reviewed 163 times. And so I picked it up. <clears throat> and actually, this was recommended by uh, <clears throat> Kip from... Uh, oh, Kippy. And, you know, some you look and you read some of the reviews, 
and um, you know, some people are saying, finally, there's a, this is an aromatic that tastes the way that it smells. So we're going to try that one. Cornell and, and Dial, Autumn Evening. Um, Rattay's Pipe Baggers, or Bagpiper's Dream. I actually really like this. I smoked it the other day, and I'm glad that I like it because this tin is like three and a half ounces, so there's a ton of it in here. But <clears throat> it smells, and actually when you smell it, it smells like an aromatic, but it smells more like alcohol. It has kind of a, 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 a uh, not rum, but uh, cognac, like a cognac type flavor to it. Um, <clears throat> Hearth and Home, I didn't really order this, just kind of thrown into my order. Uh, this is their White Knight, so we'll try this and see if that's any good. We'll give it a shot. Um, another one, this was Peterson's. <clears throat> Connoisseur's Choice also got a really high rating. Um, if I can find it here. Um, Peterson Connoisseur's Choice. 109 people have got three stars. Lane Limited BCA is another one that I got. Uh, that got 3.2 stars. Um, but the one that I'm really, really excited about. Uh, if we go by. Even I'm excited for this one. Yeah, so this is going to be interesting. I want to pull it up here. Because um, it was reviewed by a lot of people, <clears throat> and it got a really high rating. Um, but I can't seem to find it now. Uh, oh, here it is. It's called Silum's Black. It's an aromatic. <clears throat> it's black Cavendish. It's got Burley. It's got Latakia. It's got Virginia. Uh, the flavoring on it is fruit, citrus, and honey. The cut is ready rubbed. <laughs> Which, what the hell is ready rub? Uh, well, I mean, I'm, was it a flake and then it's been rubbed out? Is that what that is? <laughs> like, to me, ready rub is like, whatever, we're, we're going down a weird road. Um, but it averaged 3.4 stars. Um, this guy says it's the best English slash aromatic I've ever smoked. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Everybody says it's mild to medium in strength. But <clears throat> it looks kind of cool. I showed you guys a little bit earlier. It comes in a nice tin. This fucker was expensive for three and a half ounces. It's like twenty five bucks. You were doing me right on that deal. So yeah, I mean it's but when you crack it open, and when you get you get stuff in a tin like this in a bag. So what's why not just get it bulk? But not all of them are available in bulk. But as you can see, it's definitely dark, and it's now it just smells like really bright cherries to me because I've been smoking this other one. But that's the one that I'm I'm interested in the most, and the other one that I think that you're really gonna like. Is the Peterson plug? I'm excited that just because it's a fucking plug, man. I, yeah, I, and I, it'll be fun just to smoke it. So to talk about the Silums Black a little bit, it's actually made in Germany. Um, it's extravagant is the right word to characterize this mixture. We have revolutionized the traditional Old English art of blending. The main ingredients is the finest spicy smoky Latakia, which there you go. It sounds like you're gonna like that. By adding highly aromatic Cavendish, this blend becomes smoother. A small portion of the burley gives a slight roasted aroma, and a pinch of bright Virginia brings subtle sweet note. <clears throat> Mellow but yet full-bodied uh, aromas of honey and fruit essences, got to have the essence, uh, result in a unique flavor. Uh, this tobacco is surely will be a delight. I'm excited. I can't believe I haven't smoked it yet, to be honest. Uh, so that's going to be a fun show to talk about some of that stuff. Um, I've got another one from... Cornell and Dial crooner, which actually, I don't know if you can see, but it's got like some green like some strippies in it. It's got some 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 straight up ganja in there, I think. Ganja. And uh, the Bob's Chocolate Flake, Lane Bulk we talked about. But this Peterson plug, and actually maybe I'll open it up since we're talking here, <clears throat> and just to give us some filler for the next ten minutes. Because we, I have nothing to contribute tonight. <laughs> I mean, other than my favorite English that I've smoked thus far, mm, plum pudding. That plum pudding? Dude, I I don't know why, but I just think it's just so sexy. It just comes in this little cake, and you just break it up like you're smoking pot. No, I'm kidding. But you break it up, dude, it's, like, beautiful. Like, it just tastes good. It's just nice. Not that, you know, I'm getting a bunch of, I can say it tastes like honey or whatever. But I don't know. It just it just tastes good, just nice. This um, so which one is that? 
That's the plum pudding. Plum pudding. And I think you've sent me some of that. I haven't tried it yet. I almost smoked that. Except last... it's expensive. Okay, it so comes in bulk, but it's like five bucks an ounce, man. <laughs> it's just for real. Okay, this is this is not what I expected. Dude, it's literally a press plug. I'm glad like, that, hard as a rock. I'm glad that I opened this on the show. So because yeah, ten, you know, and it's it's taller than your average. Is it a three and a half inch, three and a half ounce, or is it one point seven five ounces? It is. Doesn't say. But it's just the Peterson Perfect Plug, right? Peterson Perfect Plug. It's a bigger tin, and you'll okay. see one in a second. Now, you, you pop it open, and when you smell it, <laughs> it, it smells this is it smells sour to me. There's like definitely some fruit, like an apricot. But it smells really sour. But so you open it up and it looks just like your average tin. You know, it's got the paper folded over, which is kinda hard to see from the life. Yep. And, you know, and then you do this, and you open it up, and you're like, oh, this is weird. There's, it's, like, empty in here. Oh, wait, this is what's in there. It's Dude, like, it's like, legit. Like, oh, it's brownie. And it's, it's... It's a pot brownie! But it's it's already... It's funny that I can smell it because it's wrapped in plastic. Now, but this thing, hard as a rock. How, in the name of all things holy, are we supposed to smoke this? I, I mean, I don't know. I'm no expert of the Peterson Perfect Plug, but I think you're supposed to literally take a knife and just cut and it. literally just no. I think you're supposed to just start shaving it off, like you know, like oh. if you have like a cheese block, you know, like a cheese really? block, and you shred. I think it's like similar. I think like you just take a knife or razor blade and like make little. I think I don't know. Well, I mean, you're, you're not putting that in your pipe and smoking it because it oh. will not light. Thanks for the tip. Hey, you're fucking welcome. That's that was my contribution. I don't want to open it, but I mean, it really is. It's just packed. It looks like a brownie. It's packed solid tobacco, and you can see. I mean, I don't know if, if it really trans. I can see the side where it looks like there's some lighter tobacco that you can kind of see a little. Well, there's bit. Just layers in there. There yeah. you go. Kind of see that. Yeah, that's much better. And it's like it's almost like layers of flake that are just compressed. So I, I almost wonder if it's just going to peel apart. But anyway, that'll make for. Uh, a fun, uh, a fun to do on that show. I'll have to figure out how to, uh, how to split. Maybe we this. just make these aromatics, not just one show, but maybe just a bunch of shows. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, Logan's journey through aromatics. Will he find one that he likes? And by the way, oh, I do have another contribution though. Go ahead. Uh, you guys are welcome. Um, let me just pull it up here before I forget. Um, so we actually have another guest. I booked when I was over there in India. April 22nd, we got Grant Babson from Batson Pops. Oh, nice. I, do you follow him on Instagram? Dude, I keep hearing, like, all these Piper people are, like, on Instagram. There's a lot and of Pipes on Instagram. I'm just too busy following suicide girls on Instagram, man. That's all I care about. So, you know, it's funny. You know. I look, sometimes I'll look and see, and see who. Well, if they're on Instagram, they're they're definitely safe for work. But if you look them up online, they're not. Um, oh, really? Oh, they're they're definitely not. They're dirty, dirty birds. <laughs> I like some dirty birds. You might find some things that you weren't ready to see. Okay, then I don't want to well, go. Maybe there. you are. Um, yeah, but probably not ready. Uh, but yeah, it's funny because I'll look and see like it'll say you know find new people to follow or whatever, and <clears throat> I scroll through and there's always pictures. Of chicks in their underwear with a bunch of tattoos. I'm like it's me and Seth. <laughs> it's me and Seth. And it's, it says based on who you follow, you should follow Suicide Girls. And I always wondered who that was. It's me and Seth. Um. So and I, Seth. I scroll through and I look at them. I don't follow them though because my wife can see who I follow. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> there's one. There's one girl my favorite. Maybe one day on an upcoming show I'll reveal her. Okay. But there's just something about this chick, like. I don't know. I don't like chicks with tattoos either. And I don't have any tattoos. I didn't have any tattoos. I don't know. But just something about this chick. We, we've gone completely off the rails. All right, uh, man, all right. So I cracked open this uh, Peterson's Connoisseur's Choice. It's definitely smells more like a regular aromatic. But this is one thing about aromatics that you can, like, when look at this. When you take the plastic up, it's that's it's damp. Just stickiness. It's sticking to it. So, I mean, that's sticky, icky, son. Yeah you got to let this stuff dry out big time before 
That was what I opened up when I opened up the, the awesome. Central Park Stroll, which I do like as an aromatic. It, it was so damp. Like, you could actually visibly see the moisture on it. Yeah. And after it dried out, after, you know, I don't know, being in the tin like a week after being open, like, it was completely a different experience. Oh, Mama Sita. What do you got? <coughs> Bad? This, uh, this I think you're going to like. This is the Home and Hearth White Knight. This is the Marquee series. And if you read the back, I think it's intended to be similar to some other tobacco. But it doesn't say which one, though. No, it says White Knight is a medium-bodied, uh, very complex and well-balanced Balkan-style blend, which there's no... Which issue. Balkans are good. Uh, I, I, the, it wasn't, the, wasn't the Balkans one of the places you could buy on... Um, Monopoly, they were one of the uh, yeah. purple ones. Yeah, they're, they were one of the purple ones, yeah. Super cheap. Um, they were cheap, actually. Uh, it's Balkan-style blend created to evoke memories of one of the most iconic pipe tobaccos ever made, but it doesn't really specify which one that is. But I'm sure if we Googled, we could figure it out. You crack this open, and dude, this is not an aromatic. <laughs> Maybe that was just put in there for grins. Um, well, no, yeah, I definitely, this was part of my order, and I didn't actually order it. But... <laughs> Mama, that is um, that smells froggy. You might like. You're gonna like that one. I think. Yeah, go send that one my way. Um, <clears throat> which I guess it just I wasn't expecting to see that come out of a tin. Um, what else? I mean, I'm opening all this stuff. I may as well open all of it, huh? No, just the word to the wise is that put it in jars. Put it in jars once you open it. And by the way, our aging experiment. For me to prove the nothing wrong is in full swing. As you can see, I don't know if I've showed these on the air, but jars properly waxed, ready to go, and have been chilling for, I don't know, not quite two and a half weeks now since I went to India. So the experiment is in full swing. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I, know. I think I just opened up a tin of what's going to be I have really high expectations for this. For me or for you in general? Well, for me. You might like it, too. This is the Cornell and Dial, or however the hell you say it, uh, Autumn Evening. What C&D. What's that? C&D. Yeah, C&D. Oh, man. Crack it open. I like that little touch. Just got a little Autumn a little Evening. marketing, yeah. Hand blended for the, dis the discriminating smoker. Ooh. Chocolate brown. Ooh. Dude, this smells good. It smells like chocolate and like figs, like fig Newtons. I love, dude. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. I've ate like three sleeves of fig Newtons in one setting. Yeah, I could just. That's a problem. Dude, that shit. I could just literally Done. go all Mediterranean on their ass. It's, it's so like, fucking good, man. You crack open, uh, you crack open some fig Newtons around me. It's like opening up a pack of double stuff Oreos. It's give me 20 minutes and it's going to be gone. Oh, for sure. Dude, think you're legit. Okay, so we had talked to one last thing before we go. Um, since I opened all this stuff, I'm going to have to jar all of it. Now, when you're jarring, and we talked about this, and I don't think I brought it up on the last episode. If I did, I'm repeating myself. I apologize. Last episode was three weeks ago. When you're buying jars, a four-ounce jar. Yes. That's like a, a jelly jar is what they're called. But a four-ounce mason jar does not hold four ounces of pipe tobacco. Two to one, my friend. Very different ratios. It's not even two to one, man. It's yeah, like it's four, pretty close. It's like four to one. And But uh, but keep in mind, I didn't pack it in there. I wasn't. Oh, you didn't jam it in. Okay. I, I wasn't. Um, a one ounce of pipe tobacco fits comfortably into, and this is a four ounce jar. That's one ounce of pipe tobacco. And it's, I mean, this is some old Toby. From just for him, and nope, I, mean, Toby. I, I like these jars, but that's in there pretty good. Oh. Yeah, I mean it's not like yeah, except for the chunky that came out. Ooh, that smells good too. But so keep that in mind. I thought I was being smart by getting. Uh, You're smart. trying to be all cost effective. Well, it's it's the, the well, cost of the jars are the same price actually. Yeah, it costs about the same. I was trying to be. I was being cognizant of the the room that I had to work with. And I'm thinking these mason jars are big. I don't want to get a ton of them because there's not a lot of uh, tobacco that I'm putting that I'm buying in bulk. But 
Like one of these tins? This is three and a half ounces, oh, right? Oh, dude, I got an eight ounce jar that probably won't even hold all that. That. This is the uh, Peterson Holiday Blend. It had to go in two, and these are... Those are eight ounce. I've got a 16. Yeah, these are eight. But I didn't, again, I got halfway in there, and I was packing it in, and there's no way it's all going to fit. So, oh, God. So I didn't go. Uh, I didn't go all commando and start just jamming it in there. But I mean, for me, I think these these eight ounce jars are the way to go. Yeah. Four ounces are just. I mean, unless you're buying a bunch of one ounce tobaccos and you want to get you know jiggy with it, then go ahead. But so if you do or are getting into pipes and you haven't really you know bought anything that you want to age or whatever, and especially if you're going to age something, there needs to be room for oxygen in there, right? And that's what we're trying to prove out. That's what we're trying to figure out. So definitely go with at least the 8-ounce jars. Honestly, like with aging, I mean, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I don't know. But if you're going to age something, don't buy an ounce to age. If you've found something that you really like that you know is going to age well, dude, save your ducats and buy like, you know, fill up a couple of 16-ounce mason jars. You know what I mean? Just okay. go for it. Like, just go for it, exactly. Just go for it, like, and just be done with it. Like, honestly, and this is probably the worst rule that I've read about pipes, and it's really pissing me off because I'm procuring a bunch of pipe tobacco way quicker. Like, I've literally got more pipe tobacco at this point in my life than I'll probably ever smoke in my life, uh, unless things really take a dramatic turn and I just don't smoke cigars anymore. But was... Everyone, when I was reading the Pipe Man's Handbook, said, buy one when you start out, mm. buy one to smoke, buy one to save. Because, like, honestly, with cigars, yeah, I mean, Cubans go up in price a decent amount, obviously, because they're, you know, they're not, they're fermented, but they don't, they're not aged as long in the pilones and shit, so they get worth more. But, like, 10 years down the road, like, this is going to be worth I'm hoping, substantially more than I paid for it. And I think that that's the case with pipe tobacco, it's more funny. so than cigars. It's funny that you say that because while you were talking, I was listening and I was paying attention, uh, but I had uh, pipe or I had tobacco reviews up, and I wanted to see what they said about some of these Petersons. And I'm looking for the, <clears throat> the Peterson that has been reviewed the most and has the highest, highest review. Like the pipe, or are you talking about just... Just the tobacco, the Peterson. Oh, pipe. okay. Because, I mean, a lot of these that we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, this, Peterson, this is, these are Peterson's uh, spe special editions. So, um, <clears throat> this is the uh, Summertime 2014 uh, limited edition. This is Special Reserve 2014. I happened to just look up and see that the Special Reserve limited edition 2012 must have, this thing must have been tits. I got a 3.7. And I would love to pick some of this up. But where would I go to find that from 2011? I don't know. I mean, I know that there's a few sites out there that um, <clears throat> will actually help you, like, try to find the MSRP of a cigar. And I know this because my friend, uh, who remained nameless, somehow came across. And I, first of all, I want to punch the guy in the face because uh, he got, you know, when Marvin Samuel got married, they did, as a wedding gift, they did the two feral bashers or whatever you call the cigar. <laughs> In the coffins, the coffin-looking thing, you know, they had the two. Yeah. Dude, he, he some, and they only were given to wedding guests. Somehow he procured one, unopened. Fucker opened it. Just, just because he was like, I'm just like antsy like that. I just got to see what it's like. And when he sold it, I think he ended up selling it for I don't know what the street value was, four hundred bucks or whatever. But if he would have not opened it, it would have been worth like double that or triple that, I think. I can't remember the exact amount, but there's a site there that basically will help you find kind of the street value of your cigars. I don't know if there's anything like that for pipe tobacco. If there is, I'd be very curious if there's like a secondary market. And I'm curious to know how much pipe tobacco will appreciate. It's I think it's more like a wine than it is like non-Cuban cigars, right? Or if you take a good bottle of wine and it's aged 25 years, it's worth substantially more, correct? I have no idea. I thought you were like a big wine drinker. Oh, sorry. I wasn't really listening. What would you say? Fucking ass. Like, 
no, with wine, yeah, wine ages. It's just like like if you have a red, right? Like you have a red wine. It's a good brand, but you age it 20, 20 years, twenty five years. Of course, it's going to be substantially more. Yeah, with non Cubans, I don't think it's really like that. Cubans, it is, but I'm wondering if pipe tobacco is. Where if I have this tin of three nuns that I bought, if I let it age twenty five years and I can prove it's twenty five years old, how much more is it worth? I'm just curious. Is three nuns good? Apparently, it's one of the uh, very good English or not English Virginia blend that a lot of people rave about. So I don't know. I mean, dude, I'm just I can't help myself. Pipes and cigars, they're marketing to me so well. Like it's like, oh man, we got this deal of us. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck me, my credit card. Uh, I can't help it, man. I'm just buying. I'm just buying right now. I'm in buy mode. It's funny. I'm I'm looking while you're talking. I'm uh, googling trying to find this <clears throat> that Peterson 2012. Nobody seems to have it, but I did find um, a place that has tins of the. The Peterson holiday season 2014. Still available, apparently. Yeah. That's, that's sold out everywhere else I look. And so, I don't know. I mean, that's my idea with the Peterson stuff, is that I'm going to buy, like, some of that stuff and just do it. The only thing, though, I mean, is a curiosity question. And, I mean, I'm, I wish I had someone on here that was actually more of not a pipe dummy that I could ask these questions to. But, like, this, right? There's no protection. Like, it's not sealed. It's just well, it's open to the elements. The, 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 the bag is sealed. Well, the bag is sealed, but, like, it's still permeable. You know what I mean? Like, I would think if I wanted to, if I was going to keep that tin, I would right. I'd take the bag out of the tin. And put I'd, the bag in a jar? Yeah, put the bag in, like, a big jar. I don't yeah. know if you could get the, the bag in the jar, though. It'd yeah. have to be a wide-ass mason jar. Or keep it in a Tupperware or something. Okay. I would do something to kind of protect it from the elements. Okay. But that's just me. I mean, I don't know. Well, but I don't know. I mean, I'm just curious. Uh, and with this aromatic stuff, it's vacuum sealed, so it's not like aromatic. It's like an acid. It's not going to get better with time. So I want to keep it in its original state, so I'll just leave it in this, this tin. Yeah, maybe. I was gonna do some reaming. Yeah, I am gonna. I'm even gonna ream out those bulbs. Um, <laughs> it sounded dirty. You're uh, gonna ream your pipes. All yeah, right. Well, that's enough about Englishes. That uh, <clears throat> that Peterson 2015 isn't expensive. How much is it? Nine bucks. The St. Patrick's Day one. Oh yeah, yeah, it was like nine bucks, nine fifty, whatever. It's about 10. the same as these other ones, but these other tens are just bigger. Yeah, I might have to pick up another ten of that uh, holiday one, just because it smells so damn good. Um, all right, so what are what uh, what are we going to talk about next week? We're not on next well, week. We're not on next week. What's our next show? Next, I can tell you right now. One second, I'm pulling it up. So we're going to be back. I think we were initially eleventh. Yeah. With Virginia's. So I think we need to get a little more specific than that. <clears throat> Maybe let's... I'm going to put some stuff together. I'll send you the, the Hobbit stuff. Maybe we can smoke that and talk about it. Or we can start doing some of these other aromatics. Or, talk, or let's do some specifics. Some specific... Yeah. We can at least have something to talk about. Because today the only reason we got through the show is because we talked about Netflix. Oh, yeah. And I'm, like, really tired. I'm about to fall asleep. But yeah. All right, yeah. so... We'll wrap it up, but uh, yeah, guys, you got questions. Post your questions. That gives us something to talk about while we're doing the show. And uh, as now, now that we're getting back into more of a steady routine, pipe dummies every other week. Um, <clears throat> and plus, we have much to talk about because I didn't really smoke the pipe that much when I was in India. Yeah, so it was, we, it, yeah, coming back, we had just kind of a, we'll have a lot more, kind of a rough time. But moving forward, we'll have a lot more to talk about. Um, and I think the, the SigFed store is going to be expanding the pipe stuff that they carry. At least that's what you were telling me, I think. so. I believe so. I mean, it's uh, taxes on pipe tobacco are, I mean, I want to, it makes me want to rack my congressman. Like, because it is much more expensive. Right. Um, yeah. It's so, like, I mean, cigar is like five cents or some shit. And like, like an ounce of bulk, dude, it's like a dollar and a half. 
Wow. And the only reason, the, I mean, if you sell pipe tobacco outside of the Pennsylvania, like, you can't compete because Pennsylvania is zero, of course, um, on that. But, no, and also another breaking news, not that anyone's listening and, or even gives a shit about cigars, but I'm going to drop a little pre-breaking news that even Rob doesn't even know about. Uh-oh. Yeah, dude, and I'll tell you, then we'll, we'll leave. Um, do you know what's going to be happening on Cigar Federation on April 9th and the 11th? No. Uh, blending seminar by Jose fucking Blanco. Really? Really. You heard it here first. On a pipe show. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's been, what, like three years in the making? Only about... Two years? Not quite a year and a half of the making. Well, that's good. But it's going to be cool, man, because... It took me a while, but I got Jose over to my side of thinking here, and not that anybody's listening or cares, but what we're going to do, um, this is still beta stage, so don't quote me, but um, you know how Jose does his blending seminar with the four rappers? I talked him into doing, giving out, instead of just that cigar for the blending seminar, doing two cigars that are the same binder and filler as that four wrappers, so you could actually smoke the base components before you added the wrappers. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. And what we're going to do, we'll do something cool where you get, you're going to get two of those. One of you'll smoke as homework, and we'll do something cool like a giveaway or something and have people say, you know, what did you think the strength was, you know, what tobaccos do you think were used, et cetera, et cetera. And then it'll be good content for Jose to talk about on the show, obviously. And then... During the blending seminar, you'll have one of those to smoke to kind of remind yourself of what are the core flavors. Then you'll go into the four wrapper cigar. It's going to be quite educational. Do you have any idea what we're going to charge for that? That is TBD. Probably mm-hmm. fucking ass rape. No, I mean, probably. Let me just say this. Well, you don't and have the, to. If you don't no, I'll to. tell you. I'll tell you. It doesn't matter. I mean, the last blending seminar that Jose. Done, did online was the summer of 2012 with Buttheads Tobacco when he worked for Hoya de Nicaragua. At that point, they you got I think five Hoya de Nicaragua cigars, um, and you got uh, one just the one four wrapper blending cigar, and it was fifty bucks. This okay. is going to be probably in the thirty five dollar range, ish. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily a money-making endeavor. It's more of an educational endeavor. Is it going to be limited to how many people we can have? Probably 300. That's going to sell out fast. I know, I know. Well, the cool thing is, I can't believe we're talking about this on the air, uh, <laughs> but uh, the, the cool thing is, is that I think what we're going to do is have John do this, um, edit the video, and what Jose wants to do is make it where it's kind of an on-demand thing. So after he does it, make it in a way where people can come and self-service and after the, the fact. Want. Exactly. Hmm. So you just heard all the dirty laundry here first on pipe dummies. Yeah. But, but yeah, so, I mean, it's in the works. The cigars are being made. Uh, yeah, talked to Jose this morning. So, dude, it's full steam ahead. Cool. Yeah, so, yeah. that's awesome. I know. I figured it'd be cool. And, you know, doing something a little bit different, you know, it'll be fun. Cool. Well, that's. Uh, I don't know why we brought it up now, but I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, I'm just kind of delirious, and honestly, I really don't think anyone's watching and/or listening right now. So I figured it'd be a good time to talk about it. People are watching. Really? I can see them. Oh, you can see. Oh, yeah. It's creepy. Through the uh, Shire. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be uh, we'll be back two weeks, and uh, topic will be TBD. We'll figure something out. We haven't quite. Uh, I think we start picking tobaccos that we're gonna smoke. Instead of saying, let's talk about Englishes, because we don't know enough about Englishes as a general rule or Virginias. Let's just pick the top two or three ones. We'll smoke them for homework, and then we'll talk about them. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. I think the idea... I think we were too lofty. Yeah, well, the idea was to... We'll we'll cover the basics, and then we'll get more specific, but... uh, That has turned to be a fool's errand. Yeah, yeah, that's not really working out. So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in to Pipe Dummies. Find us on CigarFederation.com. And we'll be back in a couple weeks with, and we'll talk about something something cool. All right, everybody have a great rest of the week, and we'll catch you in a couple weeks. Later.